What's up everybody and welcome to XCOM Chimera Squad. This game just came out yesterday and I've only had a little bit of time with it, but I'm going to, going to be doing a full playthrough on my YouTube channel. So thank you for tuning in and checking this out. We're going to get started. Uh, I'm going to start on Expert and we're going to do no healing and we're going to do the tutorial so you guys can see the story mode. Now, if you guys are familiar with XCOM, you will be familiar with this game. Uh, there is one key key feature that is different in this game. That is the turn sequence in XCOM 2. The turn sequence was the good guys go, XCOM goes, and then Advent goes. Where in this, it's actually on a based on a timeline and, and we can actually have XCOM soldiers go and then Enemy, enemy soldiers will, will take their actions and then back to XCOM, so it really changes up the strategy behind the entire game. Now, if you guys have watched my previous XCOM campaign, you've noticed that I take a long time deciding what to do first, uh, because I like to see my... I like to see all the possibilities between all the soldiers, so you can skim through them and see what they can do and maximize your damage output. Uh, but in this, you only have a limited amount of things you can do on your turn, uh, which obviously we'll get into, but uh, I'm expecting this game to be a little bit quicker than uh, your regular XCOM game. And what, from what I've experienced, I actually really, really enjoy this game. The, uh, the chain, all the changes that are in it are uh, very, very awesome. Um, I didn't think I would like it at first, and now I love it. So with that aside, let's get going. Again, we're going to start on Expert difficulty. The playthrough I did earlier was also on Expert, and uh, but I had healing on. This time, I'm going to do no healing. No healing. Let's go, XCOM Chimera Squad. Two minutes out. Hey, Godmother. Is this like the old days? XCOM swooping in and taking it to the bad guys? I wouldn't know. I spent most of the world training resistance networks. Like mine. And for your many, long years of service. Watch it. XCOM attaches you to an untested squad and pushes it into the field before it's ready. How is this not like the old days? I'm just happy to be here. I missed out during the war. I wish I could have pulled my weight. For which side, exactly? I find that very hurtful. Sure thing, Advent. <clears throat> we are through the checkpoint. I was never actually Advent. But they were fitting you for a blocky helmet. Stow it, both of you. We're here. 3 1 PD gave us the all clear. Grab your gear and prepare to move in. So, if you guys haven't noticed, this is the animation looks absolutely awesome in this Whisper. i'm so what's pumped about that 80s and what's verge's eta 80s synth Comms look working, it's great verge is en route how verge can't drive he um he hailed the cap to a hostage situation focus whisper any surprises in the next room a handful of hostiles unaware of your approach chimera squad take positions prep for breach okay so because the tutorial is on, there's no way for me to take it off. I, actually, I can take it off, but you guys wouldn't get this intro to the story. So we are going to be running through the tutorial. Um, I'm not going to really explain much of the tutorial because I know I know kind of how to play it. So I'm just going to reiterate it. Uh, reiterate it. Reiterate? Um, <laughs> I'm going to just t explain what I'm going to be doing. Uh, reiterate. That's the one. Reiterate. I'm gonna reiterate the rules here. Okay, so the main uh, the main part of XCOM Chimera Squad is the breach. I'd say that's the most important part of the entire uh, one of the most important parts of the entire game. Um, up here, where we're, we are breaching this main door, and right now the pinpoint is successful shots on enemies will crit. So. You see these three squares up here. We're gonna actually click here, and we're gonna actually put. Um, we have three troops right now. We can actually put uh, the order in which we want them to bust in and take their shots on the enemy. So we're gonna get Sherib to go first because he has a shield. He's pretty tanky, and uh, yeah, we're gonna get him to go first. Terminal will go second, and Godmother will go third. 
Again, successful shots on enemies will crit. So let's see what happens here. We're gonna breach this door. You'll see encounter one of three. That means we have basically three rooms of three encounters to deal with. They could each hold many, many enemies. We'll see what happens. Breaching in. It's so different than normal XCOM. That's why I love this part. Okay, so here's the breach. We get to select multiple targets. We have three targets here. Again, <clears throat> those of you familiar with XCOM will know the percentage-wise. Down here, there's a little breakthrough of, of the, the hit. So aim 65, that's a standard aim. Plus 11 for the weapon range and then pinpoint 100 so which is the bonus for this entry point um so it doesn't really matter who we're gonna take a shot on but i will take a shot on this guy in the back who is standing here four nice crit dude nice crit okay and now we have okay and you'll notice here that this guy says surprised there's di three different types of response levels. There's uh, surprised, alert, and aggressive. Surprised means that once we're done the breach, they actually won't react. Whereas an alerted enemy will react and an aggressive enemy will actually attack. So let's just take this guy out or try to. Oh, actually all, all hits will crit here. So it doesn't matter, we're probably gonna kill him. So again, another surprise, we'll take him out. Okay, with the shotgun. Hello. Okay. I am Mayor Nightingale. Is that our hostage? Welcome to City 31's Memorial Museum. It's just a recording. As I often say, the lessons from our past inform the present. Blah, blah, blah. History. Focus. Okay. So, like I was mentioned, like I mentioned earlier about the timeline. Here's the timeline. So right now, we have two more guys in this room, and here's the timeline. So Sherb will go first, followed by the trooper, then terminal, then trooper, and then godmother. Okay, so we each have two actions to perform, and then uh, then we're done on the timeline. Then we actually go below uh, to the end turn here, and then it restarts. So, again, we're, we're no longer critting because we are no longer in the breach phase. So what we're going to do, this is Sherib. So I'm going to move him into this. Oh, you know what? Let's move him into this uh, this cover here. It is light cover. All right, actions available. One more. 81% chance to crit. I'm going to take that shot here. Oh, whiffed. Okay. So ideally, when you're strategizing on what, like, on, on well, ideally... In general when you're strategizing you want to look at the timeline and base your actions off of that so for example this trooper here is gonna go second so it's probably in my best interest to kill him before he can react and possibly do some damage to us so um, I'm in light cover can I see that trooper from there I can't I can't really see that trooper anywhere unless I move right in the open so what I'm gonna do oh no, I can't really do much right now. I'll uh, I'll put him right here. I'll put her right here. This cover. She still gets cover from these guys. Um, another 74, 61. We'll do the 74%. Nice. Good shot. Good crit. Uh, two actions available for Godmother. Okay, so I'm going to put Godmother right here. She does have a shotgun, so she is close range um, at all times. 100% close range. Uh, she's gonna b blow a hole in him. There it is. Okay. You see this? Huh. Interesting. Contact! Clear. Verge? What took you so long? Had to unpack a breaching charge. Good man. Not exactly. You know what I mean. I always do. So creepy. Don't ever change. Verge, form up. Any hostiles in the next room? Yes. I can feel them. The elders. So if you're wondering why we have like Advent, an Advent member, and now we have a sectoid on our team. Well, I mean, we'll get into the story, but uh, which is amazing. I love the story. 
but uh, yeah, here we go. Multiple breach points. Okay, so this for this breach uh, through the main door, we have closely watched, so enemies deal plus one damage during the breach. And then through this door, seal the door. Last unit through the door uh, entrance does plus three damage during the breach. So that's really big. That's really that's really big. So we gotta prioritize who we're gonna put there. Who who has a weak shot? Godmother does not have a weak shot currently. She has a shotgun. So as long as we get in, get in and close, we're good. So I'm gonna put her first, and then the second person um, I want. Let's put Chara. Uh, actually, let's put Terminal in there. All right, so she will get the plus three damage during the breach. Oh, actually, let's put Verge here because enemies deal plus one damage during the breach on this side. So we'll put uh, Cherub here and then we'll put Terminal here since they have a little bit more health. All right, let's go breach this Stay door. behind me. Breaching. Okay, now what do we have here? We have 100%. This guy's surprised. See, this guy's aggressive, so he will actually try uh, try to shoot at us before we take our cover. And you noticed earlier when uh, after the breach we just ran for cover. Yeah, that's that's very weird and new to me, um, but I, I'm already used to it by now. But uh, here, okay, aggressive. We're gonna try to take him out because 81% chance. Pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, pretty good shot. Let's do it. Let's try it. Oh, nice shot. Okay, neutralized. What's she gonna take? Okay, everyone else is surprised. He does have a 69% uh, chance. We'll go for the, we'll just go for the 100% now. Okay, and then up top here. Okay, then we have, so this trooper is alerted. So after the breach, this trooper will actually scatter to a cover piece. Whereas, you know, surprised will just stand there. Let's try 84, nice. And Verge, 88 down there, 58 down there. Okay, we'll try the 88 over here, it's a pretty good chance. Nice. See, he got the plus one damage. Okay, now, yeah, everyone has abilities, uh, which are broken down right here. So, we'll start off by Kinetic Shield on Cherub. So Cherub places a sh uh, energy shield on self or ally to prevent all damage for the next attack. Cherub gains plus one charge when the energy shield is destroyed. Uh, does not automatically end the turn. So these white, um, so the, these white abilities here, they cost one action. And I'm actually gonna put the shield on him. Armored so up. basically, uh, he has a parry. He basically has a parry from XCOM 2. Notice how it did take one action, so now I only have one action remaining. This guy was surprised, so he's now just going to be standing there. Um, he's going next as well. So, how about we try to take him out right here? It's okay to leave Cherub out in the open because he does have that shield. Okay, so now he's not going because he's down. Now we have Terminal. Uh, terminal Safeguard, which basically is a healer she's a healer um she cleanses burning acid and poison effects and grants 20 defense which is really really nice um let's see what we want to do here let's safeguard verge uh right now let's get your insides back inside there you go appreciate it okay and then overwatch overwatch is a big change here overwatch in normal xcom um it, you would just actually overwatch and fire on anyone within range this in chimera squad it's based on a cone so you got to make sure you place your your cone correctly so anyone that moves within this cone here is gonna get hit and guys right now i'm just explaining the rules as we go along in future episodes i won't be doing this so uh, bear with me for episode one here. Okay, Verge's turn. Is it Verge? No, Godmother. So, Godmother's turn. Again, she has a shotgun, so I'm going to try to get as close as possible. Even if she does get hit, it's not the worst, because she does have a lot of health. 67%. Let's see, defense. Oh, he just has naturally high defense. Minus 30, so we might even miss here. Yeah. 67. Pretty good guaranteed miss. Oh. oh. Okay, Overwatch. Missed. Okay, she's, he's definitely gonna... Oh, he actually went on Verge. Oh, that's a shocker. Okay. Probably because he had some space left. All right, let's try... Um... Oh, you know what? 
Let's stun them. So, stupor, stun a target for one or two actions and add them to the neural network. Now, you'll see what happens. Oh, target for one or two actions. Okay, yeah. The neural network, the way Verge works is anyone uh, connected to the neural network um, can, in the future, once we upgrade some more abilities, uh, can be affected by psychic abilities. You'll, you'll understand what I mean when we when we actually get there. Um, so he is stunned for two, one to two turns, so I'm just going to try to pop him right here. Okay. And now we have him left. Now, you'll notice um, the another big thing about uh, come air squad is um, you want to you don't actually don't want to kill your your enemies you actually want to subdue them as much as possible so it's because the more you subdue an enemy basically the more intel you will receive at the end of the mission so I, and now he doesn't have subdue he has charge charged bash which is basically the same thing um, now it only does three damage um, it automatically does three damage, so it, which is guaranteed, which is really, really nice. Um, so let's just try to see what happens. I made the arrest. <laughs> That's something I always wanted in XCOM, XCOM 2. Like a shield basher would be sick. There were mods that people Set have made uh, with shield basher, uh, like bashers, but entrance. not official. Okay. Breach mode. I love the poster in the background. Nice little throwback. Um, nice little throwback to XCOM 2, which is nice. Okay, so uh, we're going to actually bust through this wall here. And to do so, we do need uh, an, an explosive. And the only one that has explosives is Sherib. So he has to go first. Um, then we're gonna actually going to put Verge second. And I'm going to explain why. Um, Godmother will go third. And then she will go last. Now, um, let's go. Let's see what happens. Now, there it is. This is a spe specific order. Well, okay, so Cherub has to go, then Verge, because he has psychic abilities. He can see who he needs to stun first, or, or uh, you know, put, apply psychic abilities on, and then shotgun. And anyway, let's go. Let's go. Hostage confirmed in the next room. We need more than that. Three one PD has a live feed. Patching through. If you surrender. I will advocate leniency. Enough. This exhibit, it is about XCOM's role in our liberation. I see you read the placard. It doesn't say how they went soft and got weak. Now, it's up to us to light the spark. He's holding a detonator. Go, now! Here we go. How's this for an entrance? Ouch. There's a little death. Okay, here we go. Now, this is the last encounter, right? This is room three of three. Uh, surprised, surprised, alerted. No one is aggressive, which is really nice. You don't want to see aggressive. You want to kill those aggressors. Um, alert is not bad, but uh, they're not going to shoot. So let's might as well start taking out the surprised guys. Okay. 62% chance here, which is not good. Um, with him, we'll, we'll just take this guy out. Normally, I would like to, uh, we'll, we'll get some stuns on soon and whatnot. Uh, 61% chance here. Oh, wow, everyone's just nailing today. Uh, 56% chance on this guy. Oh, okay, not quite. So, any aggressors would have normally shot there. I'll protect you. Again, I'm not like it's so weird to have your your XCOM soldiers just like run Cherub for cover. Down. Terminal, stabilize him. Okay. On it, Verge, with me. Protect the mayor. Confirmed. Yeah, this is supposed to happen. So any downed enemies need to be stabilized before they bleed out. And if these characters bleed out, you have to and die. You have to restart the mission. So we can actually run over. Actually, we can. What what we actually can do is. We're gonna actually battle madness one of these guys. Make an enemy go berserk and attack a nearby target. Adds them to the neural network. Now, I kind of don't want to kill this guy because I want to knock him out and uh, subdue him. So I'm actually gonna make him all go mad. And then he's gonna fire on this guy. Erasing target. And now it's gonna be easier for us to subdue him. And now Verge still has one more action, so we're going to stabilize 
this guy. That was one big shot, eh? Normally, it's, they're not that powerful. Again, this is the tutorial, so... Alright. Uh, Trooper is going next, so we're actually going to subdue him. We're going to subdue him. We're going to take this over here and take that cover. Boom, unconscious. Berserk removed, and then we're going to... Now, again, we can... We can actually safeguard. We don't really ne need to necessarily do it, but for the sake of practice, we're gonna safeguard be fine. Verge here. Refreshing. Right, and now that actually Cherub's been uh, stabilized, he's no longer uh, in play. At least, not that I know of. I don't know if we can. We'll probably need a revive or something. But, uh, but yeah, he's he's okay now. We can continue the mission. We are gonna subdue this guy. Another caller for the men. And that should be the end. Oh my God! There was a guy right here this whole time. Whoa. Engaging target. Oh, no. All right, he's on Overwatch. Okay, so uh, he's on Overwatch, which means anyone that enters this zone uh, will get shot at. He does have a pistol, so it's not the longest range. And I guess pistols are have a uh, radius like this, not a cone. Um, so what we're going to do is actually we're going to stun this my, guy. My. You can tell he does have... One chunk of armor here. This yellow, uh, yellow crystal represents armor. This represents the stun. And what else can we do here? Uh, might as well just try to take that shot, right? Nice, fifty percent chance, basically. Okay, and now we're going to subdue this guy. We're gonna run on this side with Godmother. Take her, take him out. Hostile subdued. May a nightingale. There we go. You all right? It looks worse than it is. Those medicates are really something. Compliment accepted. Yeah. What about Cherub? Yeah, uh, I think so. The only thing injured is my pride. And your diaphragm. And a few ribs. None of this should have happened. Most people say thank you. <laughs> I'm, I'm grateful, of course. But these people don't have the capability for any of this. Explain. I read their threat assessment. A month ago, these insurgents were all talk and no capability. The greatest threat they posed was to bottles of alcohol. Why tell us? Why now? City 31 shows the world how humans, hybrids, and aliens can keep a lasting peace. I'm the public face of this. Tonight, someone wanted what I represent to go up in flames. We're not in town for local intrigue. I know. But right now, you're the only ones I'm certain are fighting for that same peace. Can I count on your support? Yes, ma'am. Oh, that's so cool. So, again, XCOM 2 ended off with XCOM winning the war, and then all Advent and Mankind started to work together. This takes place actually five years later. I think we'll get to that in a second here in the story. But, um, yeah, everyone's starting to work together. And that's why you can see Verge, who is a sectoid, and um, and Cherub, who is a Advent soldier, working on the same team. And then we'll get into the Viper. Will be uh, Torque, who is a, a Viper class. She'll be joining our team. We have a Muton named Axiom. He'll be joining our team. So awesome! I love the integration of the uh, Advent. Okay, Operation Death Nightmare. What has happened here? Agent status: gravely wounded. The status in Chimera Squad doesn't really matter. Doesn't, to be honest, like you could get your soldiers as wounded as you want. There is no downtime in between missions. So in like normal XCOM, XCOM 2, uh, when a soldier is wounded, they're usually out for a few days um, and you can't use them. Whereas in this game, you can actually use them on the following mission. So gravely wounded means nothing right now. Um, it only means something when they get a scar and a scar is something bad. Basically, it's a scar is a negative trait. Uh, and you'll usually get a scar when you go when you go down and have to be revived or stabilized. You'll get a scar, and we have to get rid of that. And you do want to get rid of scars immediately. So again, uh, it, status doesn't really matter too much. Rounds of rounds of combat, f uh, so rounds to complete five. Number of encounters three. Enemies killed thirteen. Enemies captured four. Enemies civilians rescued. Civilian casualties. So the more civilians you rescue, the more money you actually get. So you'll see civilians running around from time to time. If you uh, like walk and run up to them, they'll actually get rescued and give you some cash. So uh, when I was talking about um, subduing enemies, this this is why you guys subdue it. So 
uh, from four captured enemies, captured and subdued, there is an 80% chance to earn 20 intel. So for every uh, subdued enemy you, you, every enemy you subdue, you get a 20% uh, chance that you'll receive 20 intel. So once you uh, capture or subdue five enemies, you have a 100% chance to earn 20 intel. So try to subdue at least five every mission. Let's see if we actually get that 20 intel. Package delivered to 3-1 PD. She truly believes what she says. That's why she's in charge. Not too shabby for our first official mission. Don't do that. Don't do what? Celebrate before a mission is complete. It's... <laughs> it's bad luck. Oh, damn. All right, things are going down. Yeah, someone wants her dead. And she represents, you know, the... Tonight, Mayor Nightingale perished in an explosion at City 31's Memorial Museum. The identity of her assailants is unknown at this time. The city council asks citizens to remain... So she gets vaporized the same day XCOM sends Chimera Squad to our city? You hear that voice in your head? That's me telling you to wake up! Despite opposition, Mayor Nightingale's deciding vote brought the reclamation agency to the city. Without her support, Chimera Squad's continued presence is an open question. Sorry, I cut myself off there. Welcome home, Chimera We're going to be focusing on the story, the so to speak with us. I'm going to try to Thanks shut up whenever all, whenever this also, is going on. You're fired. That's not helpful. You're right. I'm sorry. I'll patch the call through when you're ready. I followed your action at the museum and its aftermath. Director Kelly, I take full responsibility for what happened. Stop. I sent you to City 31 because I believed you were ready. Tonight, you surpassed my expectations. 3-1 PD requested help within three hours of your arrival in the city. You answered immediately. Going in, you were under-equipped and down an agent. You adapted, as we trained you to do. And let's not forget, you rescued the mayor. You delivered her to safety as the city requested. Don't blame yourself for an outcome you couldn't control. Instead, Let's focus on what's next. Director Kelly. Table. You guys remember who Director Kelly is, right? From there. XCOM 2? The news reporter? Now she's director. Hardcore. She moved up. Okay. So, here is basically the Geoscape from XCOM 2. Um, again, as the game Welcome goes on, we'll 31. unlock more During things Advent's to look at. occupation, the city was a fortress supporting an active starport. Five years after XCOM won the war, it's home to aliens, hybrids, and humans alike. There's new industry, self-government, and local agriculture to support the varied populations. Against all odds, this city thrived after the war. There were no retributive attacks. Until tonight. We don't know that. Not yet. But we can find out. 3-1 PD requested our help sifting through evidence at the Memorial Museum. They lost good officers today. Give them what they need and see what we can learn. Okay. Map 31, or City 31 map. So the city's just called City 31. Okay. Situations. Um, here we go. So basically, similar to XCOM 2, um, we have, instead of like scanning for, uh, for, for days and days, what happens is this game is based on a per day basis. So we can do all of our uh, squad things, uh, research, and then when we wanna finish the day, we can select one of these, I guess, uh, missions on this map here. And don't worry, you'll see way more missions soon. And then once you select that mission, the day is over and then a new day starts. So. What we have here is a situation. Situations uh, are resolved instantly. Um, and then there's two other, uh, two other, I guess, uh, two other types of missions, which we'll get to momentarily. So situation, 31PD needs help pour, uh, pouring through the aftermath of tonight's attack. Mayor Nightingale's death has a city on edge. Let's do what we can to help. Let's send an APC. Uh, APC is basically our team. I don't even know what that means. I feel embarrassed. Um, so yes, we're gonna send the APC and it'll automatically advance the day. Let's go. There wasn't too much else to do, 
So, we'll, I'll show you what else we can do here. Um, okay, from the archives, we've done what we can to aid 31PD Commissioner Maloof, passed along her thanks for helping her officers beat the weight of the attack. Uh, I guess that's just like story, story blips here, blurbs. Your work with okay, now it's opened a few Thursday doors. or Friday. Here's what we know. A crude plasma bomb killed the mayor. The insurgents had no access to materials for that. Does that mean they had outside help? Most likely. There are three groups in City 31 with access to this kind of ordinance. Okay, so choose the next investigation. This is um, basically the factions in Chimera Squad. Very similar to... Uh, and, sorry, very, very similar to War of the Chosen. Um, we're actually going to be selecting who, which faction we want to encounter first. Now, I'm going to go to Sacred Coil because this is the one I'm actually familiar with um, from the playthrough that I've, I, from the playthrough from yesterday. Um, so I'm going to do this again. Um, let's see here. A loose network. Let, let's see what they, they are here. The progeny. A loose network of human uh, scions. Their vision of City 31's future is entirely psionic, whether the city wants it or not. That looks scary. Just from the sounds of this, I don't like psionics at all, so I'm going to hold off on dealing with psionics. Um, the Grey Phoenix. An organization of alien scavengers. They have uh, quietly amassed a kind of weaponry reclamation in mandated... Uh, to recover. Okay. Uh, they look like robots. I don't know. Um, I'm not going to do them. I don't know what Grey Phoenix is. We are still going to do this. An underground religious movement for hybrids. They preach salvation, but only uh, to those who once fought for XCOM. Looks like we're going to be facing a mix of Advent, um, Chrysalids, and wh whatever uh, f whatever else they could throw at us. So, Sacred Coil is what happens when former Advent officers find religion or create one. They claim to be the true path for City 31's hybrids, as long as that path involves armed sedition. Director, these are local criminals. Isn't that 31 PD's jurisdiction? True. The Reclamation Agency supports local police, but we're also required to recover dangerous material. From those who would do the world harm, and each of those groups is neck deep in the stuff. So what next? Focus on a single group. Investigate, dismantle their operations, and take them down. Meanwhile, we look for any links to the mayor's death. Either way, a dangerous organization is off the streets. Exactly. The city wants justice for Mayor Nightingale. This is how we help them achieve it. I love how Whisper looks like my high school gym teacher. Um, okay, track, uh, taking, uh, sorry, tackling investigations. So um, there's there's three types of investigations we could do: groundwork, operations, and takedown. So from the first mission, learn about the faction and their methods, operations, hidden missions that must be revealed, then completed to knock out the faction's main plans and take down, stop their final attack and their threat to City 31. So here's the sacred coil again, like War of the Chosen. Um, here's this faction. We don't know anything about this faction at all. Uh, so we need to know more about sacred coil before we can proceed with our investigation. Um, okay, we already know about that. Dark events are back, like in XCOM 2. Uh, they basically work the exact same way. Um, investigation logs. So basically this tracks our history of what we have done. Sacred, Sacred Coil's propaganda is directly adapted from Advent. Their leadership must have a connection, which is very cool. I'm looking forward to uh, the the leader here. I already know who he is since I've got that far in the in my playthrough yesterday. But uh, it's it's pretty pretty awesome. So... Let's uh, let's exit that here. Now this is this is what we normally would be looking at here. Okay, let's uh, let's let's start here. Check Visit the assembly. Headquarters sent us okay. an assembly. So with the right patterns. Basically, this is our research. So and a lot of our research relies on Illyrium and or credits. Twenty thirty eight model. It'll take time to stress test our patterns. Okay, but once we have them. We're good to go. So you can see here, Android personnel. So we can actually deploy androids, like robots, in the field. Once one of our uh, soldiers go down, they get automatically uh, deployed, and they could fight for us. They don't have any abilities, but they do have a gun, which uh, guns really matter in this game. 
uh, especially with that turn secret. So right now it's gonna cost 10 Illyrium, right? We have 65 and then two days and that's it. So let's begin our, let's begin our project here. So two days, boom. Now, what's it say here? Uh, down here, uh, below investigation, it's gonna say, like, uh, it's gonna basically give an overview of what's happened. So, critical mission. Okay, credits. Uh, it's one of three resources in this game. We got credits, Illyrium, and Intel. Intel is definitely the most important thing. Always get the Intel. Intel will, uh, inc like, further the game. So, um, let's see here. This mission, it's easy, whisper whisper here. I'll keep you updated on any activities requiring our attention. Speaking of which, Sacred Coil is raiding a storage facility that holds Advent Era contraband. We should prevent that, right? So we can send out an APC and do this mission right now. It is a easy mission, but we're gonna hold back for a second. And we can actually, let's go back. New recruit, you can now select an agent to add to your squad. And here's the armory. The armory is is where we check out all of our soldiers here. Council, okay. 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 So this means we can bring more agents to City 31. It's not the whole squad, not yet, but it's something. Okay. Now unlock a new agent. Now, nor uh, yesterday, <laughs> I was given the option to choose Axiom, who is the muton I love. I've I've never used any of these guys. This is Torque the uh the the viper that i mentioned we actually might go with him let's see what these guys are shelter roll psionics ally buff mental attacks we already have verge as a psionic so i don't think we're gonna get uh, or use him yet but let's check out his abilities you can see his breakdown of all this <laughs> i can i can't beat your weapon but i will beat your shield that's awesome uh, mobility 10 so mobi mobility 14 is really good mobility 11 so he is the slowest he doesn't have the best aim again he is psionic so agent silent uh, psionically swaps positions with the targeted enemy or ally does not automatically end the turn and then locked dazzle um i think that is a uh, a breach uh breach ability agent launches a sonic blast that uh, disorients all enemies near the breach point yes that is i guess these are breach abilities or no these are just uh, abilities in general targeted enemy is disoriented for an extra turn that's really good one use permission those one use permission abilities are very uh, crucial um they can make or break uh your your job your mission here A zephyr close quarters high mobility move fast or die slow love that health eight aim 75 so Zephyr is a um, is a close combat person. I, I don't think they use any she, uh, he or she. I don't think he uses any guns. Crippling blow. Agent punches an enemy and inflicts one of several status effects. The effect is either disarm, disorient, stun, or root. This attack cannot miss and will trigger momentum. I don't know what mem what momentum is. Um, if it's the same as in XCOM 2, then basically we'll get an extra movement after we do the punch. But anyway, Fearless Advance. Zephyr blitz towards an enemy and uh, melee attacks them after the breach. This will position Zephyr near the enemy. If the enemy was alert, their alert breach action is canceled. That's amazing. Love that. Um, Torque. Uh, not the strongest either. Eight, actually it's not bad. Aim is not that bad either. We actually might try this. I do. I do love torque. Move. Uh, moving enemies. Roll. Moving enemies and allies. Poison. Poison's really good in this. Uh, quotes. Sure. Whisper. Can you quote this gesture? How about you? How about two? <laughs> That's funny. Mobility. Okay. So we got some dodge. Sixty-five. Not the best aim. Bind. So basically, what you would expect from a viper. Agent wraps up an enemy, dealing damage and preventing them from acting on their turn. Bound enemies cannot be targeted by XCOM for risk of damaging agent. Free action. Tongue pull. Agent shoots out their tongue to grab a unit and pull them into melee range. Can be used on enemies and allies. Some oversized targets cannot be pulled. So very uh, utility based, very utility based. If you want to lock someone down, an enemy down, if you want to help someone and pull them back, um, that's torques your your main role or your main character here. Uh, Zephyr, uh, just action, action, fight, 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 which I, which in this game is very welcome. You kind of want to be as ag as aggressive as as humanly possible in this game. So, for the sake of well, what I love in combat, hand to hand. Let's let's try uh, let's try Zephyr here. I'm sorry, Torque. Zephyr, you made it. Yeah. You grab a locker. 
Yep. Have everything you need? Yeah. Good talk. No. <laughs> nice. Okay. I guess Zephyr Zephyr is uh is is female. Okay. I had no idea. Alright, let's do this. Uh momentum. Zephyr is immune to root and gains an additional move action after using crippling blow. Wow, okay. All right, nice. Uh, immune to root. Root is basically once you breach, you're stuck in that one position uh, for your next turn. Which is great that she can't be rooted, right? She just keeps moving and moving. All right, so again, the locker room. Here it is. We can actually, you know, look at all of our agents, right? Agent abilities, okay, here we go. Uh, promotions, once uh, once your agents level up, we can uh, apply these abilities. It's a little tree, it's not too big, it's not long, right? So, which is really, really nice, short and sweet. Uh, I don't know any of these, so um, agent, oh, we can check out the loadout, right? What they have right now, gauntlets, armor, there's no armor. Um, no breach items, no utility like grenades or ammo. Um, no breach items like explosives. Again, armor, no armor. Um, okay, what do we have here? Uh, let's go agent bio. Let, let's check out all their bios, shall we? Might as well do it now. Old world origin, Australia. Prior to invasion, no confirmed past. Scattered records suggest she was Australian, undergoing the hybrid amalgamation and psionic lath procedure in 2021. 14 years old. I love this world, old war, world origin. So she was from Australia. That's cool. Prior to invasion, 2016 to 2034 occupation officially created in 2021 per Advent records. Transfer transferred to City 31. Worked as a loyal Advent soldier under the Psionic Network. Separated from the Psionic Network by the Skirmishers Resistance faction. Yes, Skirmishers. Joined the Skirmishers and quickly rose in their ranks. Operated primarily in City 31's region. That's freaking sweet. 2035 war for liberation fought advent alongside XCOM for the duration of the war was present for all the uh, for the fall of city 31 28 years old to present left skirmishers at the uh, at the war's end applied to the reclamation agency after f uh, failing to uncover her human past Rec recommended uh, for Khmer squad by multiple XCOM soldiers she once fought beside and then we could tint the armor so um, what color do we, let, let's let's make her yeah let's put her in red yeah Zephyr okay cool let's check out Verge here um, again we don't need to really check out their uh, their their loadout right now they don't we added we don't have anything um, so let's just actually whoop, let's go back to Verge here let's check out uh, we could check out the agent abilities that they, they don't have any yet bio okay Prior to invasion, Sionic support for infiltration unit for Thin Men. You guys remember Thin Men from XCOM Enemy Unknown, right? Uh, 2015 invasion, actively worked to subvert human governments. Experimented with uh, delicate long-term mental control of human subjects, 15 years old. 2016 to 34, assigned the long-term uh, long control of, of an influential human who could keep the uh, populace docile with, uh, with uncomprehendable what? Uncomprehensible, reassuring answers to their questions about aliens. I'm going to reread that. Uh, selected as a candidate for conversion. You might want to reread that. Selected as a candidate for conversion into sectoid infused with human genetic material. Post conversion exhibited signs of empathy towards the human populace. Quietly began to tip off resistance groups. That's cool. Uh, 2035 war for liberation served as a mole actively aiding resistance groups and XCOM to present spent time in detention camp while XCOM realized his role in the war agreed to reclamation agency transfer director Kelly approved his admission to come air squad cool uh, let's go over to cherub here oh you know what let's uh, let's tint his armor right let's tint his armor he's like a psionic so let's make him like uh, I don't know I don't know if that looks good uh, what should we do this guys i don't know i don't know i'm terrible with this this is the only thing you can do like convert um it's not that much so we'll just keep it there okay cherub what's up buddy um let's uh let's do your armor like blue like a bright blue i don't know why agent bio old world origin estonia prior to war cherub belonged to the 
uh, empty cohort, a batch of hybrid clones with full advent training but no advent indoctrination. 2035 War for Liberation emerged from his clone crash. Immediately befriended two XCOM soldiers, zero years old, 18 physically. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that's so cool. He was he's so he's a clone. Um, he's zero years old, but he looks 18 physically. To present, transferred to detention center. Uh, exhaustive testing revealed no advent sympathies despite being part of the uh, Bolzmar clone line. Released from detention and recommended as a test case for XCOM utilizing skills of the empty cohort. Transferred to the reclamation agency after proving his capability. Requested placement in Chimera, Chimera Squad at first opportunity. Reclamation HQ has observed his enthusiasm improve the morale of his squad on multiple occasions. He's a he's quite the uh, class clown here. And that's the thing, every all their banter and their the, the dialogue in this game is very, very good. I love how they just communicate with each other. They yeah. Uh, very different from, from normal XCOM. Agent Bio for terminal. World World Origin China prior to invasion. Only child on of a factory worker and a cook. 2015 invasion. Parents died in the initial invasion. Her uncle fled with her uh, with her to a, a relocation camp. Four years old. 2016 to 34 occupation. After her uncle died of disease, she was effectively adopted by a doctor who lost her only daughter to the invasion. Transferred with her adoptive mother to a small town in the outskirts. Began ap uh, apprenticing in her adoptive mother's medical office. After after a punitive punitive advent attack wiped out her town, a resistance group. Pulled her from the rubble and brought her to the safe brought her to safety she exhibited a severe shift in personality war for liberation combat medic for a resistance group exhibited absolute fearlessness and saved hundreds of lives 24 years old to present initially rejected for the reclamation agency but requested regular sonic probes to prove she is fit to serve assigned to chimera squad after uh, after probationary period that's awesome so she, that's why she's a medic she was uh, raised by uh, <laughs> she worked in a medical facility. That's cool. Uh, let's tint her. Um, let's give her. Let's give her some yellow. Um, you know what? She is. She is a. She's a med. So we'll go red here. Even though I know what's his name is already red. Okay. Agent Bio. For Godmother, uh, world, uh, old world origin, France. Prior to invasion, national tax, uh, national tactical police officer with a few years of experience. 2015 invasion went to the, went to ground after the fall of Paris. Spent a fruitless year searching for her family. 23 years old. 2016 to 34 provided operational training to the nascent nascent European resistance groups. Strongly advised against director resistance which she learned brought overwhelming reprisal raids. Connected with XCOM proper during uh, its leaner years, remained a friendly asset as the organization rebuilt itself. In 2032, she developed a formalized tactical training program to screen XCOM recruits. That's cool. 2035, War for Liberation. Field liaison to ally allied resistance groups supporting XCOM. 43 years old to present. Modified the XCOM recruit training program to suit the needs of the Reclamation Agency. Joined Chimera Squad provisional, uh, pro provisionally to ensure field ready status. Oh, and let's tint her up here. Nice. Nice blue here. We'll, we'll switch him up to green. And we'll do this guy. We'll go back. We already have. Let's do. Let's do that. How's that look? Ooh, that looks even. That looks tight. Yeah, I like that. Okay, here we go. Um, let's go back here. Now, right now there isn't much going on. Um, oh, by the way, here is the our temporary field supply. This is our store we, where we could buy Weapons, buy items. Comms and ammunition yeah. supply is where we request everything else as long as it's in the squad's budget it's ours so you see here uh we're just gonna select all right now uh, instead of breaking it down what we, we have 145 credits we can buy some stuff right now and i suggest um buying <laughs> buying some things right off the bat for example trank rounds if a target would be killed, they will be rendered unconscious instead. Unconscious units are captured at the end of each mission. Reclamation gets more intel from live captures than body counts. Agents are encouraged to incorporate non-lethal trank rounds into their loadouts. So, 50 bucks. We're going to get that. Um, we're going to buy... 
we could buy two med kits. Um, a ceasefire grenade is really nice. And a med kit. Two med kits, ceasefire grenade, and tramp rounds. Okay. Uh, one agent idle. So every mission we could only take out four, which means we have one guy remaining. Um, who should we take? Let, I think we should take on this next mission. Um, I do want to try out... I do want to try out Zephyr. So let's try out Zephyr. Um, and we're going to actually put Verge in the assembly. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but when you have someone in um, the assembly, it actually speeds up the day. So if we want to, example, for example, remove... Um, no, I guess at this point it doesn't matter. There's only one day remaining. But if there was two days left and we put someone in the assembly, it would go to one day. So the day is just reduced by one. So we'll keep him in there. Um, and then we'll we'll go here. There's a critical combat mission target available. So let's check it out. Whisper here. I'll keep you updated on any activities requiring your attention. Speaking of which, Sacred Coil is raiding a storage facility that holds... Oh, I already read all this. So we are th not for 35... Police credits you see a theft this Call is what this mission is one pd and move on okay so but there is one notable exception hostile forces carrying dangerous contraband may attempt to flee the scene don't let them escape okay so we don't want enemies to escape okay so investigate sacred coil in highland square easy we have door window keypad door all right uh projected encounters three encounters so let's uh let's load load ourselves out here so for first thing breach item we don't have a breach item we do have a med kit which we'll equip him equip her with a med kit because she's just going to be running out there uh but solo so uh let's do that we have a shotgun shotguns are powerful so we're going to actually give her the trank rounds we don't want her to kill anything um and she already has a med kit on her um so how about we give him the med kit we could give her the ceasefire grenade and a ceasefire grenade basically means anyone within uh the radius of the explosion uh gets their weapon disabled they could still move but their weapon is disabled for that turn which is very powerful uh, when you're trying to manipulate the timeline. So, alright guys, that is it for, I think, episode one. We're on Operation Grizzled Waltz. So this is typically where I'm going to be um, leaving off every episode on this screen here uh, before we launch. So, uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Next episode, we'll get this mission underway. We'll do some of the uh, Geoscape stuff after and then go on a next mission. But uh, yeah, on this mission, Operation Grizzled Waltz. Guys, we are taking Godmother, Sherub, Terminal, and Zephyr. And one last thing, if you guys, uh, <laughs> please, if you could, um, like this video. Uh, it really helps me out a lot. And uh, if you did enjoy it, yeah, again, like it, comment down below, and, le and let me know uh, what you guys think of XCOM Chimera Squad. I'm loving it so far. I'm pretty pumped. It, I wasn't too sure about it at first, but I'm pretty 130,000% on board. Alright guys, thank you very much for watching, and you can catch me in the next one.